Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this CPU heatsink fan from Cooler Master. This is the Cooler Master Hyper 612 PWM. So here's a closer look at the box itself and uh, I'm going to spin around here to the side that's not quite as pretty but has a lot more information so we can go down the specs of this particular cooler. Uh, first off, you'll want to know what CPU socket is, it is compatible with because you'll want to buy a heatsink fan that's compatible with your current motherboard and processor. So for Intel, it is compatible with sockets LGA 1366, 1156, 1155, and 775. For AMD sockets, it's compatible with AM3 and AM3+, AM2+, and AM2, as well as the newer socket FM1 for uh, Fusion APUs. Uh, of course, we have the dimensions of the fan itself, and for this I'm actually going to flip around to this side real quick because it's got the dimensions with a picture. Uh, so viewed from the top, it's 136 millimeters wide, uh, 100 millimeters deep for the uh, actual heat sink itself. Uh, it is 127.5 millimeters deep with the fan attached as well. And uh, yeah, if you're looking at it from the bottom, this is probably where you'll need a little bit more information, particularly for clearance for your memory. So you get 42 millimeters of clearance there from the uh, base plate up to the fins. Uh, the height overall is 163.0 uh, millimeters measured from the, uh, again, the base of the heatsink all the way up to the top of the fins. So make sure you've got enough space in your computer case to fit this in there. Let's flip back over to our side here with all of the uh, additional information. It's got a copper base and aluminum fins. It has six heat pipes. Uh, the entire weight is 806 grams or 1.78 pounds. Uh, it uses 120 millimeter fans. Uh, they are PWM fans, so you get a rotational speed of between 600 and 2000 RPMs, plus or minus 10%, and uh, that will vary depending on the actual uh, heat and temperature of your CPU. So uh, the PWM control or pulse width modulation gives it some additional capability in that area to stay quiet when uh, the rotational, rotational speed is not needed and then to ramp up as your system heats up. Uh, your fan airflow is 24.9 to 82.9 cubic feet per minute depending on the rotational speed of course. Uh, air pressure is 0 0.3 to 2.7 millimeters. Uh, you get a life expectancy of 40,000 hours on the fans, uh, long life sleeve bearings. They are four pin connectors, as is what required for PWM control. Noise levels between three and nine, I'm sorry, between nine and 36 uh, decibel A rating. Uh, you get a 12 volts uh, rated voltage, uh, operating voltage of 6.0 to 13.2 volts, rated current 0 0.22 amps, input power of 2.64 watts, and a fan weight, uh, just the fan by itself, of 0.23 pounds. Next up, let's take a look at what comes in the box. You get two user's manuals here. Why two? Well, essentially, this is a smaller version of the user's manual, which is all in English and uh, has all your instructions. And for our international users, you get a much larger manual, which is spread out right there, and that has uh, lots of different languages on it. So. I don't know if you can read them all there, but uh, if English is not your first language, you should be able to get the instructions you need right there. And the images, of course, will help you with the installation procedure. Here are your accessories, and then we have the heatsink fan itself, which I'm just going to drop out of the box there. That's about all. We'll set that aside and take a closer look at the accessories, first of all. It's assuming, of course, I don't knock them off the table. All right, so there's all your brackets and all that good stuff, as well as your attachment hardware. So first off, in this little baggie, you get uh, some Cooler Master thermal paste, which is necessary for an aftermarket heatsink fan to do your thermal paste. Uh, you get these retention bolts for the back of the unit. You get this little Phillips head adapter, so you can actually use that with these bolts to tighten them down properly, which is pretty necessary. You get some additional fan mounting bolts there, as well as some screws, and uh, you get these uh, little rubberized guys here, which you can use to put in between the uh, fan and the heat sink itself to reduce vibration, as well as some grommets so you can actually feed the screws through. Now inside this baggie, you have all the rest of your hardware, so you get a universal back plate there for Intel or AMD installations. Uh, you get these little top plate guys, so um, 
just looking at this here, I'm going to make an educated guess that these are your brackets for AMD mounting solutions. These are most likely your brackets for, I'm going to say, uh, that must be LGA 775, and then these are for your larger Intel mounting solutions. So there is all your hardware there. And now here is the heat sink itself. I'm just going to roll right along here. So there you have it. Uh, there's your Hyper 612. This is a sizable heat sink fan, and uh, there are a few reasons why it is as large as it is. Again, uh, double check those dimensions. Make sure you have room in your space, room in your computer case for this. Also, room for clearance on your motherboard for all of the additional hardware there. Now, one reason that this cooler is so big, you might notice here that the spacing between these cooling fins is wider than you might typically see uh, on a lot of computer heat sinks fan. Essentially, that's allowing for air to flow over it more easily. So, even with a low fan rotational speed, you'll still get plenty of air flow across those fins and it will allow it to effectively dissipate the heat uh, better. Also, you can't really see it, but um, hmm. how can you see this? Maybe you can see it through there. If you look at the bottom of these uh, fins right there, you might be able to just see there are some gaps. So they've actually uh, cut some gaps in the fins. It's, it's, it's really difficult to see, but it's right up there against this sort of base heat sink. I think you can kind of see uh, the holes that are cut vertically uh, through each of each of those fins and again that's just to uh, reduce some of the resistance to the airflow that you might find you get when you have the uh, heat sink up and running but uh, apart from that we of course have these copper heat pipes down there so you get a copper base plate at the bottom and right now it's protected by this little plastic piece of course peel that off before you apply your thermal paste and install the unit uh, you have six heat pipes and they all uh, go right under that base plate. Uh, you also get this additional little uh, guy under there, which uh, is going to give you some additional heat dissipation straight from the base plate right into that heat spreader. Over here on this side, you have your pre-mounted 120 millimeter fan. This uses, uses a clip attachment system, so it's uh, similar to the Hyper 212 Plus or Hyper 212 Evo. Not too difficult, you can just pop those clips off there to remove the fan just like that which you'll need to do for installation uh, and then what you get here in these plastic clips uh, is mounting for an additional fan so you get 120 millimeter fan uh, that comes along with the unit if you want to do a push-pull configuration you can easily add another fan by using these uh, uh, mounting brackets there as well as the uh, pads there for um, padding between the heat sink and between the fans and there at the top, you can see your copper heat pipe configuration. So uh, you can see the top of the heat pipes there. Fans, uh, air is going to be flowing either that direction or that direction. So uh, whichever way it's going, it's going to be immediately hitting uh, all six of these heat pipes as the air flows across it. And then, of course, at the top, uh, you have this uh, black bracket, um, which is going to be the most visible part of the heat sink fan in most cases. So you get a nice Cooler Master logo there. I did want to give you guys a least quick once over of the installation pr procedures for this. Also to correct myself from earlier, but uh, again this is a universal mounting bracket. This is insulating tape on it. So uh, you actually want this tape to face the motherboard. So uh, if you're going with the AMD, or if you have an AMD motherboard, you're going to use this side and that's going to go against the motherboard and back like that. If you're using an Intel motherboard, you'll use this side and again that has the uh, insulating tape. Don't peel that tape off, it needs to be there and you mount that side against the back of the motherboard. As far as securing on the back of the motherboard, it's just going to be these bolts right there and uh, once you get these different brackets uh, punched through, you simply secure it in the back with the bolts. So uh, you will need to access the back side of your motherboard for this, uh, so you either need to remove the motherboard from the case or if you have a cutout, you might be able to access that without doing it. That being said, on the uh, heat sink itself right here, you have a couple different mounting solutions. Uh, I was slightly in error earlier. These are the only brackets you will need if you're going to be going with an Intel solution or Intel uh, socket. Uh, these little guys can move around in their uh, different to three positions there for 775, 1155, or 1156, or 1366. You're actually going to take these and secure them to the bracket like so, uh, position them. Uh, for the sockets that you are using 
Uh, you, of course, secure them to the uh, securing plate down here at the bottom, and then you can drop that onto your motherboard. AMD, there's actually a slightly, uh, well, kind of a unique solution here for uh, orienting the, this. Um, since your Intel bracket is square shaped, you could position the fan uh, vertically or horizontally, or you could rotate it 90 degrees if you want. You can do that with AMD as well, but you'll want to choose uh, the correct brackets here depending on how you want to orient it. So again, you'll secure these to the bottom, and uh, the AMD has sort of a rectangular solution, so uh, you can use these if you want to orient it uh, horizontally in the case. If you do want to rotate it 90 degrees to have vertically, yeah, actually that's what these long brackets are for. So uh, you have them facing in like that, so they'll still make your rectangle, and you can simply mount them onto the bo bottom like that, and that will allow you to uh, orient the heatsink fan in your case however you prefer. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Cooler Master Hyper 612 PWM CPU heatsink fan. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.